This is the new M4 iPad Pro with the new Apple Magic Keyboard and the new Apple Pencil Pro. In this video, I'm gonna use some drawing apps, show you what it's really like to use this thing as a professional artist, designer, and illustrator. I'm gonna tell you exactly what's new, how to use this thing, and if you should buy it for $1,500. Let's not waste any time and get right into this. So let's start with what's new with the iPad. What makes it different than the last one? I think there's three main things I really wanna cover. So the first thing I would say is the display, the size, the screen, all of that stuff. Now they also came out with an iPad Air and both of those products, the Pro and the Air, could be either the 11 inch or the 13 inch. This is the iPad Pro 11 inch. It feels sort of similar to an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. It's not a bad size, especially when you're just holding it in your hand like this. The 13 inch is pretty awkward to hold in your hand. Now what also makes this thing kind of awkward is that it is so thin, really thin. They made it as thin as possible. It's actually the thinnest Apple product ever in history, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. I myself am very careless and I'm very clumsy. <laughs> so I'm pretty worried that I'm going to drop this thing and crack the screen. We'll find out with the stress chest people how well this thing holds up to scratches and bending and throwing it in your backpack. But for me right now, it feels pretty good. I'm just hoping I don't drop it. So while we're talking about cracking the screen, it's important to talk about this new display. This display on the new iPad is a pretty big deal. This is called a tandem OLED display. That's what Apple is calling it. Basically, it's two OLED panels stacked on top of each other. Now, that sounds kind of fancy and you probably don't care. What you do care about is that it's twice as bright as the last iPad. It's also double the contrast ratio. But what's most important for us designers and artists is that it has deep blacks and better colors. So what I wanna show you here is that the best bezels on this device is almost exactly the same as the black on the screen. If you were to pull up an old device, this black on the screen would be like gray or even sometimes kind of blue depending on what device you're looking at. I might get some hate for this, but Apple is one of the best at color calibrating their screens. This screen is very color accurate. It's very close to what you are going to print. So you can be rest assured that what you print out of this will be about the same colors as what you draw on the iPad. That's a big deal. Now the second big update to the iPads that I wanna bring up is more of a PSA. So I talked about this a little bit in my last video, but there's a new option with the iPad where you can buy this thing with a nano texture glass. A lot of people are assuming that this nano texture means textured glass that you'll be able to feel it and it'll feel different. There's a popular screen protector out there called Paperlike that you can put on top of your iPad and it makes it feel like you're drawing on paper. That's not what what the nano texture glass is. All the nano textured glass does is it removes and reduces glares. When you're working on this really big screen, there's a huge chance that you're going to get some sort of glare. So this nano texture glass option reduces that glare. So you can work in pretty much any environment. So again, it does not change the feel at all. It just still feels like regular glass. It's not gonna feel like paper. It's not gonna feel matte. It just reduces glare. If you want that option, then you can get it. If you want a paper-like feel, then I would probably say get paper-like. Also, buyer beware, if you choose to get the nano texture glass, that's going to reduce some of the good things we just talked about. Like those blacks aren't gonna be as deep anymore. The colors aren't gonna quite be the same. For this iPad, it's probably not in your best interest to have every single option on there and make it the most expensive iPad possible because that nano texture glass is probably not what you're looking for if you're clicking on this video for a designer artist review. Now the third major update to the iPad that I wanted to bring to your attention is the computer chip inside. If you don't care about computer chips, then that's fine. And you should probably just get the M2 iPad Air, which starts out at $599 and will save you some money. If you do care about computer chips, this has the M4 computer chip in it. So not the M2, not the M3, but the M4. And it's gonna be as powerful as you can possibly get. If you're just using this iPad for Procreate and for drawing, you don't need 
need to buy an iPad Pro for the M4, you can buy the M2 Air if you want. Unless you're an animator or you're a video editor or you're using this iPad for something unique like that, in which case you probably don't need me to tell you to get the M4 chip. The benefit of the M4 chip is that it will future-proof this iPad because the apps and the programs are not even taking advantage of the current chip. So as work gets more complicated, files get bigger, video files get larger, whatever you're doing, the M4 chip will be around for a long time and should service your needs. Now enough talking, let's go ahead and start using this thing. I'm gonna go ahead and open up notepad here. As we get into this, I want you to know that this is a not sponsored video. I put my cold hard cash into this gosh dang iPad. This is an unbiased review. Do you guys see that up there? Not sponsored. I did this just a few weeks ago with the Apple Vision Pro where I used it to design a logo to see what it would really be like in the future. You can click on that video right up here somewhere. The keyboard itself is pretty snappy. It's metal, it's got a nice trackpad on it. It uses gestures and swipes, just like the MacBook, which is really convenient. You can kind of swipe around and stuff, and it's super snappy, very responsive. It's amazing. I'm gonna pull up Freeform here and try some of the new Apple Pencil Pro features. Procreate, I think we're waiting for a software update there. So if you're new to iPads and Apple Pencils, go to Apple Store and try this thing out in person because it really is a unique experience. So you can kind of lift up on the pressure and it creates a thinner line or you can press down and it creates a thicker line. It feels very intuitive, it's very snappy. Now some of the new features with the new Apple Pencil Pro, for one, there's kind of this hover feature. Now this isn't totally brand new, but there is kind of a cool shadow that is cast. This is a digital shadow that isn't a real shadow on the screen. It actually changes depending on what tool you're using. It's kind of a little gimmicky thing, but it's interesting. But a new function with the Apple Pencil Pro is the squeeze function. So you just take this sucker and you squeeze it and it opens up a menu. What's really interesting is that this squeeze that you're doing feels just like you're pressing a button. It feels like you're pressing down on it and it goes click, but there's nothing there. If I squeeze here, I'm doing the exact same thing. It's because Apple is using their haptic feedback technology so that it feels like you're pressing a button. It really tricks your mind. One day your Apple Pencil Pro is going to run out of juice and you're going to go to squeeze it and realize that you haven't been pressing a button at all this whole time. It's just a little vibration that actually comes from up here and tricks your brain. It's kind of creepy. Anywho, if we open up the squeeze panel here, here on Freeform, you get all types of different tools. So you can kind of browse around here, you can pick one that you want, and then you can draw with it. If you open up the settings app, you can actually type in the search box now. You can type anywhere now. We can say pencil, and it'll pull up the Apple Pencil Pro settings. I think one that people will use a lot will be showing the color palette. You can also switch it between the tool you're using and the eraser. You can also change the double tap squeeze to customize what that does. So now you actually have have two buttons on the Apple Pencil. You have the first squeeze and you have the double tap squeeze. Two different buttons, which a lot of people are familiar with with their Cintiq tablets and their Wacom tablets. Another cool new feature with the Apple Pencil Pro is the barrel roll. So again, we're in freeform here. If you were to click on the highlighter, you can see when I hover over and I twist the pencil, that twists the direction of the cursor there. It's really like you're using a real highlighter. You can actually twist it, change that direction. Pretty cool. So it's just nice to see that Apple is kind of bridging the gap even further between the digital pencil and the real pencil. Now, I would show you Procreate here, but it doesn't really have these features implemented yet. You can see there's no hover. You can see there's no barrel roll. And when I squeeze, nothing happens. So there's not much to see on Procreate, but if you're considering the Apple Pencil and the iPad for the first time, Procreate is a really cool tool that really takes a lot of the pressure out of the drawing. It really helps you feel like you know what you're doing, and it's really fun to use Procreate. When Apple released this new product, the Procreate Create CEO was there with the announcement so we can expect to see the barrel roll and the squeeze functions implemented into there shortly.
Now what I also want to show you is how this thing works in Adobe Illustrator. So this is Adobe Illustrator on Mac and I'm actually using the iPad as a second monitor, sort of like a graphics tablet. I'm going to make a how to video that will be right up here or right up here somewhere up in the sky on how to do this. But I just want to show you how this thing works real quick. We've got my MacBook on the right here and we've got the iPad on the left. And all you have to do is just come in here and you can see even the hover feature works perfectly fine where I can hover over the screen. In the past, this feature has been a little laggy, but it works well now. Just start drawing and you can see there is no latency there. It works really well as a replacement to that old bamboo that you've been using. So this is just an additional benefit if you have an iPad and you have a MacBook that you can connect these two and actually draw on Illustrator. You could draw on Lightroom, on Photoshop, or even Final Cut or After Effects and get some really cool effects by drawing straight on the canvas. Now, of course, the pressure sensitivity isn't really going to be there and the squeeze function does absolutely nothing but it works and it is a drawing tablet so that's really cool that we can use it this way again if you want a how-to on how to make this thing work just click on the video that i just posted so the big question is it worth it well, so this iPad Pro starts at $9.99. It's 11 inches, and that is the exact same price as a MacBook Air. I think that does open a little bit of a debate of do you get an iPad or a MacBook? And it depends on who you are and what you're using it for. If you're in college and you're using this thing for note taking, if you're using it for drawing, if you only need to browse the web and send some emails, I think that you could get this iPad and do you just fine. Now keep in mind that $9.99 does not include the Apple Magic Keyboard or the Apple Pencil Pro. You get the Magic Keyboard, you get the Apple Pencil, and you got a pretty good setup for someone that likes drawing. Now, if you don't like drawing, I don't know why you're watching this video, just get the MacBook Air. This setup exactly cost me about $1,500, including the tax. Again, that's this 11-inch iPad Pro with the keyboard and the Apple Pencil. I think that's a little bit <laughs> expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can sit here and really encourage you to buy that much iPad for that price unless you're doing some pro things like animating. I feel like the iPad Air might be better, but I wanted to show you everything that the iPad could do with this video. All of that being said, this was a big year for iPad. This was a long time coming. They haven't released a new iPad like this in a hot minute. If you've been considering of getting an iPad, this is probably the one to get whether it's the pro or the air because it's been so long since they released the prior generation and it will be so long until they release a new generation that it does make sense to buy this one it's good timing if you want to buy an ipad i would say get it now this M chip is gonna last you a long time. It's very future-proof. It's not gonna slow down on you or anything like that. This thing will last you years. It's the color accuracy with this new screen that's doing it for me. And this new Apple Pencil only works on these new models. And these new features are pretty impressive. Either way, if you do decide to buy this iPad or the keyboard or even just the Apple Pencil, use the Amazon link in the description. It's the best price you can get. You're not losing any money. And I get like a dollar if you click on it. So it helps me pay off this credit card debt that I accrued <laughs> by buying this iPad. Now, if you want to see me use a banana instead of the Apple Magic Mouse to see if it's actually a better mouse, you can click on this video right up here somewhere. And please subscribe to the channel. I post some sort of design related content every single week, and I'll be posting another video next week just for you. And I'll see you then. See you.